so it's time to work on our foreground. And I've got my fan brush and I'm going into some of that nice dark base mixture. And load your brush well for this. So you take it through the paint two or three times, turn it over, a few little taps. Make sure those bristles are well glued together. And I might need a little bit more paint. We'll see how we go. And and I'm going to follow this this line. You can see I've tapped out a line, and I'm just touching, I'm pressing, give the brush a little flick and build up a little bit of a suggestion that there's a tree line here. Um, reload your brush. I haven't quite got enough paint so I'll just tap in a little bit of paint and we're looking more just for a suggestion of some trees here. So we're not looking for individual trees we're just looking for a, for a whole group of them. Now when I started putting my, my brush on the canvas here maybe yeah, I should have taken a second and thought about the position I was going to start these trees in. So you'll see I've made a, a middle mistake. You can spot it in a second, but just follow along for the time being. So I'm just going to continue that little line of trees. Tapping and flicking, just a little short flick. You get the corner of the brush on there sometimes. And can you see the problem I'm making for myself here? No, it'll become apparent in just a few moments. switch my brushes here and I've picked up my second fan brush and now I want to lay in a little bit of snow. I want to just catch the, the that little ragged edge underneath those little trees and whoops here's my problem now. I, I should have started with that little bank of trees at the top first and put the snow on and then put in the little second bank of trees. So you can see my problem now I'm, as I'm putting on some snow here and just grabbing some shadow I'm going to hit the first little row of trees I put in so I'm going to just knock their little heads off and there's my problem so you see I should really have started with that first little bank of trees at the top and then put this second little bank of trees in now um, in the second sort of phase so it's easy to do you can trip yourself over and paint yourself into a corner and if you don't do it at least once or twice or a few hundred times then you're not trying hard enough and here I am I'll go back and fix the little tree tops that I took off it's not too bad, but you see, just easy, easy to make a little mistake, but well, part of the fun. And I'll carry on just laying in some snow and just just catching the little bottom edge there and just dragging off a shadow. And again, I'm following the lay of the land. You see, I'm working over the top of some of the grey of the mountain there on the base of the mountain. I want the highlights to the right, and I want the shadows to the left. So. Spend a few minutes on adding these little trees and these little details. They're, they're really important to your painting and they will give your painting that little bit of an edge. When it comes to looking at quality, people will say, wow, look at all those little tiny trees. How did you paint them? And you know how easy it can be now. paint over the the little ridge that comes towards us and put some trees on the on the left side of that little ridge and don't be afraid to use those little trees to change the shape of the land see I just put a little bit of a, a steep drop there to indicate that the land falls away a little bit steeper on the right so you have so much control over the way the painting looks just by deciding on which way the the trees line up And again, back with my white fan brush, and this time I want to make sure that the, those trees to the left I'm working on, they're in the shadow. So I'm going to make sure the snow over there looks a little bit more grey, a little bit more shadowy, and the snow on the right, that that looks a little bit brighter. So here's your chance to really again form the land properly. 
Now, if you're looking at the top of my mountain, it looks like it's the wrong colour. It looks like it's gone brown. That's just a trick of the lighting. I've got a, a light uh, positioned above my canvas and it's just reflecting off the paint. It's a little bit shiny. So that's the reason why it looks brown. It's not. It's actually grey. And here I'm laying in that brighter snow on the right. And you can see I'm trying to make a, a definite division between the left and right hand side. So I'll put a little bit more shadow into this left hand side. And you only have to shadow just that little tiny piece there. You don't have to shadow all of it, just where those two edges join. Got a little bit carried away there, but I'll blend that out. I didn't particularly like that very straight line between background and the foreground just here so it looked too straight to my eye so I'm just going to add in a couple of little extra blob of white snowy paint just to break that line up. You see I put a couple of little lumps and bumps in there It's always good to take a few moments to really look at your painting when you're working on it. We can get so carried away and sort of have our noses pressed against the canvas. We never really get a chance to stand back. So take a few moments just to get up from your chair and stand back a few feet and really have a good look. Um, you could see something amazing happening that from 12, 14 inches you're not going to see. But from the other side of the room, maybe something amazing. So take regular step backs from your painting. I can't advise you enough of that. That's probably one of the key things to remember. Always stand back. Just a final little fiddle with that snow. Can't resist it, can I? Well, there we go. That's why this section of the painting is called foreground and fiddly diddlies, because fiddly diddly is what I'm doing. But I say it's it's good as long as you're doing something creative and you're 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 doing something well and you're not just playing around and breaking it that's fine but it's always uh, good to stop maybe a little sooner than you think I, I can't tell you how many times I've I've broken my paintings for the sake of just spending ooh, just a few too many moments with that brush and if you find yourself saying to yourself I'll just in your mind that usually means I'll just break it. <laughs> so my advice is if you catch yourself saying, I'll just do a little bit, well, that's probably the time to stop. But you'll know when. Now I'm going to reposition my camera in just a moment because I, I want to get a a slightly closer shot and it's down here where the snow meets the water and I've loaded my palette knife with a little roll of white paint and it's a very even little roll I'm using a little bit of firm pressure here. I'm really kind of leaning on that knife you can see I'm just pressing into the canvas here as you see I'm just going to bend it there a little bit so leaning on the canvas and just skidding it along notice the angle of my knife it's sort of slightly tipped up at one end and what I'm doing is I'm squeezing the paint out of the back of the knife. Now you can go the other direction and notice the angle of the knife is slightly high on the right and slightly low on the left and again I'm squeezing out the paint from my knife and what I'm doing is I'm creating a little ridge of paint like squeezing paint from, a, from the end of a tube and you can go back over this and you can reshape this. Now don't worry too much about those little ragged bits at the top. I'll catch those in a second but what I'm trying to do is build up a a thick edge which could be the snow meeting the water so I'm just going to go back and tidy that up so you can go back and play with it and move this around a little bit but this is something I know folk have a problem with sometimes and it's you just got to have the angle of the knife so it's not too level you got to just tip it up on an end and now I'll come back in with my fan brush and I'll just catch those little edges there and just tidy up pull that snow back from the water well, we know it's not snow, it's paint. But 
Just going to tidy that up. And that's how easy it is. But it's something people struggle with a little bit, and I used to, so I'm just the same. So I'm just going to tidy up. Blend that in. You don't want to see where that snowy white paint joins the background. Pull those edges together. And I'll zoom back and you'll see that I've done left and right of this little ridge. There we go. So now you can see I went to over to the right and over to the left. I'm not too worried about the edges, the left and right hand sides. I'm going to put a tree on one side probably and we'll see how we go with the other side. So here again, get that knife angle just tipped up slightly so it's not level. It's running with a slight upward angle. And again, just grab and pull out. Snow a little bit of more definition where it meets the water. I'm going to load the small edge of my knife there just with a tiny little bit of the that dark base color again. I'm going to go just just in underneath the edge of the snowy water there and see if I can just drop in a little shadow line. So this isn't always uh, necessary, but it does give the painting that little bit of depth. It makes the the snowy edge really look like it's standing up off the water. You see here, but again, this is uh, an area you can get yourself into into a pickle. So we'll see how I get on. Do I get into a pickle? Well, any moment now. Yep, there I am. I fiddled with it one too many times, and look what I did. I created a smudge. But that's the whole idea of this painting: is to show you some of the little mistakes you can get into. So let's let's fix it now. I'll get a fan brush and try that. Does that work for me? Well, my problem's getting bigger. I'm now smudging it all over. So that didn't look too good. And now I have a big grey smudge. And the more I try, the worse it looks. Ah, yes, time to fix that bit. That was my cue. Nope. Fan brushes are just not big enough. Time to call in the big guns. That's more like it. Sometimes when you get a little bit of a, an oops on your painting, attacking it with a small brush just isn't the right way to go. you will be better off just to pick up a big brush and really, really smooth it out and blend it out nice. You see now my mistake is hardly there at all. So maybe a knife isn't the way to do this so I'm going to go back in with a little liner brush and I'm using just some of that um, linseed oil and I'm going to add a little tiny drop of linseed oil to some of that dark base mixture and I want this to be really oily I want this to be really thin so it's got a nice chance of sliding off with that little brush and not too dark I'm going to go for a sort of a, a darkish gray color here and you see I roll my brush, twirl it through my fingers and pull it to a point. So my my brush comes to a nice and a nice tip. Now here's something which I do, and you can't quite see, I've got my hand covering it, but I use my little finger like a little tripod, and I use my little finger and I balance it on the canvas. You might see it in just a second here. My my little finger just touches the canvas to steady my hand. Now I'm not too worried about leaving marks on my canvas. I can pick up a big brush and just wipe them out, but I'm just painting in with a liner brush those little shadow lines, nice and easy. I brushed out my finger marks, and it's time to move into this foreground area. Now I'm going to go back to my original dark brush, the one I laid in all the sky with, and I'm going to go back through this dark color here. So. Again, you can see, I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to just drag it through. If I move my hand out of the way, you can see what I'm doing here. There you go. I'm going to lay it. You see, I'm just dragging and I'm just pressing it in. I'm not pulling it through the paint so much, but I just want to splay the bristles out a little bit. And here, I'm just using the brush to 
stipple onto the canvas. I'm not, I'm not flicking. You'll see what flicking looks like in a minute here, but I'm just stippling the canvas with the brush, pressing and letting the brush sort of leave a little speckled imprint. And it's important that you get a nice build up of paint. You're, what you're doing here is you're creating a lovely texture on the canvas. If, if you could get your fingers on the screen and feel the canvas, you'd feel it be all rough and pimply. So I'm creating a sort of a lovely sandpaper type texture here. So let's see what flicking does. Well, that gives a slightly different look. See, it's much softer. So that's not really what we're looking for. No, we don't want that. What we want is that lovely, dark, speckly look to our paint. That's much more uh, what we're looking for. So I can just paint that out. My little happy accident there. Again, just working away. And I want to just fill the foreground with dark. And notice that I'm painting individual little bushes here. I'm trying to paint maybe four or five little individuals rather than just a row of brush strokes that look just like thumbprints. Um, that's hard to work with because it's hard to see where one bush stops and one another one begins. Here, you've got a chance. Now, I switched brushes, gone back to a nice clean brush, and I've gone into my white now and the same technique look at my brush lovely opened I make sure the bristles are all splayed apart and here I'm going to go with gentle pressure I just want to add some little snowy effects to the tops of my bushes and I'm just touching gently here my hand will be out of the way in a second you can see what I'm doing so I've just touched the tops of those bushes again I've loaded my brush touch 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 nice and gentle and leave some of that dark shadow color if you just fill it all with snow you won't see one bush where it stops when the next one starts again just touching gently with the brush and it's all nicely opened up it's like lace again save some of those lovely shadow areas separate up those little bushes take a few moments when you're loading your brush just double check make sure you've left some shadow because this is the stage when it gets to gets to be so much fun you don't know when to stop and next thing you know you just create a big a great big mud pie of white and grey and it just ends up being all smudged together and it's so easy to happen I've done it a million times and um, so if you can learn just to hold back a little bit from doing that you'll save yourself a lot of heartache and of course it's not too hard to fix we just have to get a little bit quick with the palette knife and zip off anything that's in the way but just just take your time with this this is this is the fun so it's a bit like having a nice big cake to eat and you have to take your time savor it a little bit don't go eating it all in one go although I do sometimes I'm slowly building up this bank of trees and bushes on the right hand side now what my painting lacks really is I need a little bit more of a something a bit more in the foreground here so over on this left hand side I, I think I want some nice fir trees so I'm going to go back with my dark fan brush you know so I got two fan brushes one for snow and one for shadow so um, I'm going to go back to my shadow and I'm going to just drop in a little fir tree here and I'm going to just position it first I'm going to just make a little center line but just by pressing in the brush it does help to put the little middles in first because then you can see how you're doing for position and here I'm going to have my fan brush tipped downwards so see my brush is down and to the right and I'm just using the very corner of my fan brush tapping away and I'm sort of zigzagging around through the center of the tree and as I go left and right I'm growing a little wider but try and stay narrow 
these trees are much better if they start off a little bit skinny looking and then you can add a few limbs onto them rather than the other way around they start off being, being enormous and then you can't shrink them but, so start with them a little thin a little skinny and, and then do what I'm doing now just add a few side branches to it and he needs uh, someone to talk to so we're going to give him a little buddy and again I just marked the center line got my position right and again I'm just tapping with the corner of my fan brush and working backwards and forwards across the center here I just want those to come down and just tuck into the top of those bushes so if I if I mess up any of the bushes I can always come back and fix them I'm just gonna add a, a few little side branches but be careful here see what happened there my my tree got a little bit stumpy at the top so I had to add a, f a little bit more top to it and just a few little tiny side branches here I'm going to take my palette knife and sort of run it up the center of the tree and give them a nice little little point to the top of the tree makes all the difference see how that really pops that forwards now And these little bushes and trees will need some snow as well. So I'm switching brushes now. I'm going back into the white paint with my white fan brush for, for some snow. And I just want to touch mainly the right side because that's where the light's coming from. So I'm doing the right side of my tree first with a freshly loaded brush. And you can see that I want that to look brighter. And then as my brush runs out of paint, I'll do a little bit in the center and then finally on the shadowy side of my tree which is the left side of the tree I'll just touch in a little bit of snow there but snow that's got a little bit of background color into it. it's a bit more gray so this way we get the trees to look sort of round now again I'm gonna make a little mistake in a minute here I'm gonna have some some fun with these trees and maybe a little too much fun so here I'm doing the, the shadow side of my tree so not so bright. If you've ever painted fir trees or had a go at painting bushes and trees, you'll probably know what's going to happen in a second. I'm just going to have a little bit too much fun and then we'll see what sort of a pickle we get ourselves into. they look pretty good I'm quite happy with those but of course there's always the temptation to just come back and fiddle just a little too much I'm sort of pushing my luck now getting blobs of paint where I don't really want them and of course the inevitable happens I just put on too much paint and I start making a smudge now if I left it now it will probably be okay but I've just overfilled that tree so I'm gonna go back with my dark brush and I'm just gonna separate out some of those smudges I'm gonna go back and use some of the shadows just to break up some of those blobs of white that I put onto it just here and there so it's only a little fix I'll just make sure I've got everything done and the last little bit the final little fiddly diddlies here just to scratch through into the white of the canvas underneath so I want to put in some little sticks and twigs and little bits and pieces here and use the knife just to push the paint up so just grab a little bit of that dark color here and just use your knife just push it like you're raising a little bit of a, a grassy effect and just using the blade on edge don't push too hard you'll cut through the canvas but you can be fairly firm with this and you can create the most amazing fine little hair like details everyone wants to know how you do them well, you don't have to tell them but that's how I do them push a few more up there I 
hope you've enjoyed this little painting. I'm just going to add these final details to my painting and I hope you've enjoyed watching me paint this step by step. So this will be the last step of our painting, the, uh, the final bits and pieces on it. But it's just been a nice little demonstration picture and possibly this could be your first painting. It's just a simple three color painting so you don't have to worry too much about all the colors and finish it off now with a nice little signature. And I'll be doing some more paintings for you and some more explanations and some more details and no doubt some more little accidents along the way and showing you how I fix my paintings but I hope you've enjoyed this. I think what this painting really needs now is a frame. Let's see if I can find one for it. That looks good. I'm just going to drop this on top and there we have it. A finished painting. Happy painting people! <laughs>